Hello, everyone, and welcome to our book club. Uh, I want to start with a brief land acknowledgement before we begin and say that with gratitude, we recognize that the land for a safer space meets on is on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wombat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and that we're all treaty people. And we are grateful to be working and living on this land and therefore will respect and continue to take care of it. So again, welcome back to our book club, our part two of this book club. And as a reminder, my name is Kristen and I am a fourth year social work student at Ryerson University. And with For a Safer Splate, for a safer space, I am a placement student. So once again, this is the book that we are covering. It is called Your Silence Will Not Protect You by Audre Lorde. And some of the major themes that we'll be talking about in just about every, uh, every part of this book club is uh, sexism, racism, homophobia, as well as survival and change. And now we're not covering the full book in one sitting. I have broken it up into five different parts. And today we are on part two and we'll be exploring the theme of power. And the essays that are involved in this theme are the uses of the erotic, the erotic is power, sexism and American disease in blackface, an open letter to Mary Dolly, and man child, a black lesbian feminist response. As for the poems that we'll be including, uh, they are called Separation and the other one is Black Studies. So before we get too far into it, I do want to provide a brief content warning. There is some discussion of violence against women, as well as talk of gun violence and uh, some talk of emotional abuse, emotional manipulation. So uh, I urge you to take care of yourself and do what you need to do to uh, feel your best and stay safe. As for the language that I've included, some of it might be difficult to understand. So if you see a star or an asterisk beside a word, that means I've included a definition of it at the bottom right hand side of the screen. So without further ado, let's talk about power. So Laura discusses how we all have power and we all exercise power in some way. And she describes that power can be used, but it can also remain unused. Most unused power uh, remains unused because we live in an environment, in a society that tells us that there's only a certain amount of power that we are allowed to have and that we're allowed to use. So people from equity seeking groups were at one point in time denied the use of their power. So women, Black people, same-sex couples, among many, many other groups, were all denied to use their power legally. So women were not considered people until the 1930s. Uh, black people were legally owned by other people. Same-sex couples are, to this day, denied the use of their power for marriage. And I want to emphasize that in each of these cases, these were supported by the law. It was legally allowed to tell people that they were not allowed to vote, that their power as a citizen was not enough. And these were supported by laws, by politicians, by institutions, and by systems. So a lot of these unspoken rules about power and how we're allowed to use it are socially created and they're maintained through government systems, families, as well as institutions. But Lord also suggests that it's not necessarily these larger systems in our life that uh, repress our power. We're actually taught to repress our power as well on an individual level. And she provides an, an example using women. Just in this quote, I'll read to you. So as women, we have come to distrust that power which rises from our deepest and non-rational knowledge. We have been warned against it all our lives by the male world, which, which values this depth of feeling enough to keep women around in order to exercise it in the service of men, but which fears the same depth too much to examine the possibilities of it within themselves. And that's from her essay, Uses of the Erotic, the Erotic as Power. 
So what Lord is saying in this quote is that women have been told and have been taught that um, emotions are, are too much, that the emotional side should be kept to, should be kept to themselves and not out in the public realm. But what Lord is saying that that emotional side in this context actually holds a lot of power and that even though society doesn't necessarily value it, it is still power that we have and power that we've repressed within ourselves. But that power is also still there. And this, of course, has many impacts in these power dynamics. So an indiv individual's power is suppressed when it's considered a threat. If, any, if someone's power is challenged, the, often the reaction is to then overpower or to at least assert some kind of dominance. And we see this happen all the time through instances of racism, sexism, and homophobia. So when we do see, uh, say, a sexist act, usually it's an act of dominance. And it can be a violent act, but it could also be something subtle. But either way, it causes harm. So the power misuse and power suppression can have major impacts on society and our lives. So the more power that we're socially allowed to exercise, the more opportunities we have access to, the more likely uh, we are to be more privileged in society and the better li livelihood we are able to have. But that also works the other way. If people have been denied to use their power, then that could mean a limited, uh, limited opportunities and limited access to certain resources that we have, which then can have a negative impact on one's livelihood. So this is one of Lord's poems from the book, and it doesn't talk about power directly, but it does pull in some themes of power. So I want to just read it first, and then I want to say a few things. So the stars dwindle and will not reward me even in triumph. It is possible to shoot a man in self-defense and still notice how his red blood decorates the snow. So I want to just pull your attention to the second paragraph there in the first three lines. It is possible to shoot a man in self-defense. That is a big statement. And if you think about it, um, to shoot a man is a huge exercise of power. And it's almost scary to think on it for a second and think that humans actually do have this power to choose to end the life of another person. And I'll just continue on and still notice how his red blood decorates the snow. This is interesting as well because I feel that there's a bit of humanity being drawn that even though humans do have this power to choose to use it violently or not, um, we also have the power to recognize and be compassionate and have empathy for those around us. And again, it doesn't talk about power explicitly, um, but I think it's very interesting how Lord is still discussing power, but also bringing in notions of humanity and life and death. And I think altogether, that's a very interesting conversation. So what happens when we misuse our power? <laughs> so some use their power specifically to overpower other groups or other people. And Lord looks specifically at how black men and white women use their power to further marginalize black women. And this is a common theme throughout the entire book. Um, and it's not specific to just the conversation of power. So I have some examples um, about regarding how scholars have decided to use their power in a way that doesn't include black women or misrepresents black women. So first we have a quote here, I'll just read. So here we have an intelligent black man believing, or at least saying, that any call to black women to love ourselves is a denial of or threat to his black male identity. And that's from Sexism and American Disease and Blackface. And that ties back to what I was saying about asserting dominance. So for some reason, the call for one group to love themselves um, 
is considered a threat to another group in some way. And because that, that group is threatened, there seems to be this resistance of that other group um, progressing in some way. And another example here, I feel you do celebrate differences between white women as a creative force towards change rather than a reason for misunderstanding and separation. But you fail to recognize that as women, those differences expose all women to various forms and degrees of patriarchal oppression, some of which we share and some of which we don't. And that's from an open letter to Mary Dolly. And this is interesting because in this essay, Lord is actually responding to a book that Mary Dolly wrote. And in Lord's perspective, it completely misrepresented black women, but also didn't, didn't explain the experiences of black women in a realistic way. So what this quote is saying is that there's more, uh, there's more of a, there's more to be said about Black women, and in this case, in Mary Dolly's writing, Lord suggests that there was a lot missing from it. And here's my last quote here. So one oppression does not justify another, and that, that quote's also from Sexism, an American Disease in Blackface. And that's interesting because when we're talking about groups of Black men and white women, there is oppression there and both groups have faced oppression in some way, but together that still doesn't mean uh, the harm and marginalization this is causing for black women is okay. If anything, it's just the oppression taking on another form and still causing harm. So with that, Lord's final thoughts are to, su uh, she suggests a level of responsibility for us to use our power. Um, and that we should not be using it in a way that causes harm to ourselves or other people or other groups. But of course, to do that, we have to be aware of our power. And this means being aware of how we suppress our power, how we may misuse our power, but also the kind of power that we have that remains unused. For example, for people to not vote in an election, that's just not using their power because they, as a citizen, you do have a right right and responsibility to vote. Um, so to not participate in something like that would be considered unused, just as an example. But Lord suggests that being aware of your power means staying true to what feels right to us, but without the influence of harmful forces like racism, sexism, classism. That being said, um, idea, uh, racist, sexist, classist ideas are so ingrained in our society, as human beings, we absorb some of that anyway. So it's also about being conscious of that in ourselves and trying to change, change the way we think little by little when we can. not But Lord offers this example of how she became aware of her power in a situation and then decided to use it in a different way. So this, um, in, uh, this instance, happened after her son came home one day from school crying. And I wanna read you what she had written. So my fury at my own long ago impotence and my present pain at his suffering made me start to forget all that I knew about violence and fear and blaming the victim. I started to hiss at the weeping child, the next time you come in here crying, and I suddenly caught myself in horror. And that is from Manchild, a black lesbian feminist response. So within this quote, Lord as a mother, which is a very powerful position, realized that how she was going about the situation maybe wasn't as supportive as she would like. So in this example, she was able to stop herself as um, she said, stop herself in horror, um, but then was able to change how she progressed that situation after in a way that was more supportive for her son. So that's what she means by coming aware, becoming aware of the power you have and making sure to use it in a way that is supportive and not contributing harm or oppression. So just some final thoughts for you before we wrap up. So we all have power. That is one thing that I, if you were to walk away with anything from this, that we all have power. We are often told how we're to use our power um, by both government systems as well as family and parts of our culture. 
and we're often not aware of the power that we have. I would say more often than not, as Lord suggests, we actually have more power than we think we do. And we can use, and it's possible to use our power in a way that suppresses others, but we have a responsibility to avoid this. Even for just building a brighter future for ourselves, we have a responsibility to use our power in a progressive way. And we can also change how we use our power and that we are in complete control of how we use our power. And that is important to remember. At any point, we get to choose how, uh, how we decide to make ourselves in this world. So with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this book club and I look forward to the next installment. Have a good one.